Hello there, people of the internet. So just due to some of the various discussions I've had with a couple of people, I figured I'd go ahead and start talking about temporary stretch cavities and permanent wound cavities. Um, whenever I get asked about this kind of stuff, it's normally by people that are not very oriented with uh, firearms and the different effects that different projectiles have. But more or less, it's about people that ask how the 5.56 is so effective, especially in comparison to much larger caliber projectiles. They want to know why the smaller 5.56, although putting less energy on target, is still the military, well, I guess not anymore, is still for a long time what the military went to uh, instead of a larger, more powerful projectile. And a lot of that has to do not necessarily with the impact the bullet itself puts on target, but with the stretch cavity that the bullet would make whenever it actually hits that target. Whenever, trying to pick my words very carefully here, whenever a round, well, whenever a round impacts a target, if the target is gelatinous <laughs> in any real uh, way, then whenever it impacts that target and the energy is transferred from the projectile into the target, that target is going to stretch and come apart, sort of like whenever you shoot a watermelon with a bullet, it doesn't just poke a hole in it, that energy is transferred from the bullet into the watermelon and the watermelon explodes. The Essentially the same thing is, or well, literally the same thing is done whenever it is shot into some sort of gelatinous, like any sort of gelatinous mass, whether or not it's ballistics gelatin or any sort of flesh or a watermelon or a cantaloupe or whatever it is that you're shooting at whenever it's hit that energy is going to transfer from that bullet into whatever it is and whenever a bullet is going fast enough to transfer enough energy to stretch that cavity beyond whatever it is that uh it is hitting is capable of being stretched uh, you start to go from a temporary stretch cavity, which is the stretch, what I describe it, the stretch that is not stretchy enough to go beyond the elastic properties of whatever it is that you're hitting. But if it's going fast enough to dump enough energy on a target, then the stretch goes beyond the elastic capabilities of whatever it is that you're hitting. And then that's where the whatever it is that you're hitting starts to really become damaged because that stretch from that temporary cavity will do a lot of internal damage. Now, it's more for rifle cartridges. This is a concept that is for really fast moving rounds, and it's not really something that you see from pistol cartridges. A lot of people talk about, you know, the effective means of pistols and the effective means of rifles, but they are in two completely different leagues. When something is hit with a rifle cartridge, that stretch cavity is primarily what does the tremendous amount of damage. But when something is hit with a pistol round, it typically just pokes a hole right through it unless you have like hollow points and it expands a little bit. But for the most part, you don't get too, well, you don't get as much of a cavity as you do with a rifle round just because there's a lot less energy from the pistol round uh, in comparison to the rifle round. Now the 5.56, what makes it effective is its velocity. Whenever something is going extremely fast and it smacks onto target, it transfers a lot of energy onto that target. Uh, typically with energy transfer, you either try to go with a lot of mass or a lot of velocity. In the case of the 5.56, we were trying to get a more intermediate round, carry a lot of ammunition, but still be very effective whenever it smacks onto the targets that we were wanting it to uh, smack onto. And the speed of the 5.56 is what gives it the terminal ballistics to be able to cause that temporary stretch cavity into a permanent stretch cavity because it goes beyond the elastic stretching capabilities of the targets that we shoot at. It really is a very simple concept. Now, I do want to say that when people point out that when you go to more powerful rounds, people assume that the stretch cavity is going to be uh, substantially bigger and for the most part that is correct but on the targets that we shoot at if you catch my drift uh, that round would likely go depending on how powerful it is it would likely just go right through that and not have time to slow down tumble do whatever it has to do to transfer that energy that's why when people shoot something with a 50 BMG it either absolutely makes it explode into a hundred billion pieces or it just goes right through and just leaves a little hole and you don't see any real uh, effectiveness behind it. There's not really an in-between with that round. It has to do with 
how long it takes for that bullet to be able to transfer energy. Whenever you shoot something with a round, uh, the energy transfer is not immediate. You'll see like a couple inches with a 5.56 in gelatin, you'll see a couple of inches of just hole, and then the round will do something that will cause it to tumble and transfer, transfer a lot of energy, whether it's tumbling or fragmenting or whatever. It will transfer all of its energy on a target, and that is whenever you get the massive cavity. If you are shooting something that is skinny enough for the round to not get the chance to transfer its energy into the target, then you're not going to have anything beyond just a little tiny hole in your target. So essentially, you may as well just have fired a pistol cartridge at them that does not reach the terminal ballistics of rifle cartridges. Now the 5.56 with its terminal ballistics is a little bit on the tricky side because a lot of what people are wanting to do now is they're wanting to get shorter and shorter barrels, just more compact, more practical systems for the 5.56. But because the 5.56 is po so popular, they're wanting to continue to use the 5.56 because of its massive popularity. But the issue is the 5.56 was designed for these longer barrels and it's that longer barrel that really gives the 5.56 its velocity and its velocity is what it needs to be able to uh, dump its energy onto target, well not dump its energy onto target, to have the energy to dump onto target. Whenever you start lowering barrel lengths, you start decreasing velocities because the bullet doesn't have the time in the pressure of the barrel to really get itself up to speed and launch itself downrange. Now, you do have a lot of leeway with the 5.56, but anything, like once you start going beyond like, or underneath like 14 or so inches, you start seeing some really significant decreases in velocity with the 5.56 round. Originally, it was designed for, what, 20, it's either 20 inch or 24 inch barrels uh, for the original AR-15 platforms, but it was designed for ext extremely long barrels, especially in comparison to the AR-15s that we are using nowadays. I have my Ruger Mini 14. This right here is a pre-580 example, so it is one of the ones that is not accurate. It's got the thin barrel, it's got the sights that aren't great, it's got uh, all the harmonics that aren't quite where they need to be, but this is accurate enough for my plinking at 100 yards, but that's not what this is about. I'm not sure what the barrel length is on this thing, but I know it's longer than a good portion of ARs. Thank you, Kevin, I appreciate that. Kevin's over here screaming right now. How you doing, Kevin? You're looking all majestic, buddy. <laughs> here, I'll come do the rest of the video right here with my co-host, Kevin, in the background. But the barrel length on this Ruger Mini 14 is actually quite a deal larger than the barrel length that I have seen on many AR platforms, especially if you start going into AR pistols. And those shorter AR pistols, although they are more compact, easier to use, etc., etc., the velocities of those rounds are going to be so much slower that whenever they hit their target, you may as well be using, you know, a, we're just going to say a pistol caliber because, well, assuming that they are in an area that is beyond where the velocities of the 5.56 would be effective. With those shorter length rifles, the 5.56 uh, coming out of the barrel just does not have the speed necessary to cause the issue, well, the terminal ballistic issues that the target is supposed to have with the 5.56. And whenever you start going out to uh, much further distances, the velocity begins to drop and you really start to see uh, those issues pop up. So shorter length ARs aren't really applicable for longer distances. Now, if you want one for home defense and you are going to be using it specifically inside of your home, then you know in the 50 yards that you're gonna be shooting at, it's not gonna be uh, that big of a deal. But whenever you start trying to touch out to five, six, 700 yards, with a 5.56 out of a 8-inch barrel, it's just not something that's going to be very effective whenever it hits onto its target. How you doing, Kevin? Are you enjoying yourself over there? I feel like Kevin has something to say about the 5.56, but he must be a little shy because he's going in that direction. That's the shy, Kevin. Isn't that right, Kevin? Or maybe he's not shy because they normally don't come up like this. The concept of a round losing velocity whenever the barrel length is shortened is not necessarily a new one, but it's not nearly as uh, big of a deal as it used to be back when uh, black powder was being used. Black powder really relied on having a long barrel to achieve the velocities necessary for it to do what it had to do whenever it hit its target. Now, smokeless powder, our rounds are going way, way faster than black powder rounds. Black powder like if you were shooting something at like 1500 feet per second you were really moving something versus nowadays that is not a hard level to reach 
you five five six, for example, out of a uh, normal non carbine length uh, AR barrel reaches like thirty two hundred feet per second, which is a ridiculous velocity for what it's uh, actually intended to be doing. Whenever that hits target, if it is at a close range, I don't know, I've never shot something, I, I don't think I've ever shot an organic, materialistic target, besides like fruit and stuff like that, an actual organic, materialistic target that was closer than 100 yards with a 5.56. I don't think I've ever done that. I might do that at one point or another. Maybe I'll make a video and I'll shoot like, I don't know, a, a roast or a ham or something like that just to see the effects of the 5.56 at, you know, different kinds of distances. I think that'd make a really cool video. I'll write that one down on my to-do list. Anyway, hopefully this right here was a good little explanation about what makes 5.56 so effective, even though it's just this tiny little projectile. I mean, it's a 22 caliber round, and typically 22 long rifle is like 40 grain, and 5.56 is like 55 grain, so it's not that much bigger like a 22 long rifle, but it is so much more effective because of the velocities that it's able to achieve, but it only achieves these velocities whenever it's fired from a longer barreled rifle. Now there's plenty of rounds out there that are designed to have very high velocities out of a short barreled rifle, but the 5.56 is just so popular and it's got so many go-tos and that's what people go to because of its popularity. But it is definitely effective as long as it retains its speed necessary in order to actually do the damage on the target that it needs to do and cause that permanent wound cavity as opposed to just poking a hole into its target, which is exactly what it does whenever it loses the velocity necessary to achieve what it was originally intended and designed to achieve. Anyway, folks, uh, at this point I feel like I'm kind of rambling here, so I'm just going to go ahead and say, hey, thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe to the channel, like the video, description down below has a link to all sorts of stuff, go ahead and go check that out if you feel like it. Besides that, I think I'm out of things to say on the subject, so I'm just going to say, hey, you guys go off, have yourself a fantastic day, support GOA and FPC, is this my GOA hat? Support them, we need them now, more than ever. You guys have a good one now. I've done this. Bonnie and Clyde be damned. <laughs> the poor man's Garrett. <laughs> Shame that bolt-action shotguns aren't uh, more mainstream.